Hey guys, it's Gareth Olson as Pew Pew Pew, one of your admins for the GOT and one of the people responsible for the power rankings. Uh, we are covering the Sinnoh conference, I believe, unless I'm mistaken. And uh, joining me today, I have uh, a new friend, I'd like to say, Ice Demon Grey, another one of the admins. Hey guys, right. what's up? Uh, we're here to cover, as I said, uh, the top 16 of uh, the Sinnoh conference, so the people who aren't featured on this were the drafts not deemed I guess worthy of being covered uh, it just saves time for us and I guess Aster on the other end when it comes to uh, just putting everything together so here we are um, we're just gonna sort of get straight into this uh, no real need to discuss what we're going over it's just based solely on the draft so you'll understand as we go through our views on every team uh, and to kick off this list at number 16, we have no other than Narth Vader. Uh, now the notes that I have on him are pretty straightforward. Um, his defense mainly is very strong. He's got good, reliable recovery and he even has wish pass options if he feels the need to do so. Um, with mons like, uh, I'm trying to find his team now. Uh, with mons like uh, Keldeo, Shaman, no wait, not Keldeo, sorry. Uh, Necrozma, Shaman, uh, Altaria, and Registeel is sort of his big defensive mons. Kamala can then wish pass into Registeel, which has no recovery, obviously. And even Necrozma if it runs out of Moonlights. Um, he's got decent hazard options when it comes to setting, but his removal is heavily focused on Kamala, which isn't great because it's not a mon you want to bring every week. Uh, in terms of offense, again, decent enough. He's got an Entei there, which is always good for breaking a wall. Um, Mega Alta... Sorry? What, what did you say? It wasn't Embor. Oh, Entei. did I say Entei? I meant to say Embor, yeah. sorry. My bad. Uh, and Mega Altaria, of course, which is a good setup option. And Weevil as a Zemon, uh, while I think it doesn't necessarily need it, is very interesting. Especially when it has access to things like Low Kick and what have you, which uh, could give it some decent coverage if it needs it. Um, otherwise, it's just one of those teams that doesn't quite match together for me. Uh, it's got quite an underlying fighting weakness, especially if that fighting type has options to switch out, like a U-Turner. Uh, because things like Necrozma and Altaria, which would be a switch-ins, aren't super reliable against fighting types. I guess Necrozma kind of is for the most part. Uh, but other than that, it's got quite a few weaknesses. Uh, Overall, decent team. Once again, he's made the list, so he's done well enough for now. Uh, it's one of those teams that can do well week in, week out, but can also struggle with some matchups. Uh, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, I really agree with what you said. The only thing I wanted to add with the uh, things that really don't fit is like his speed. His Weavile is extremely fast, and then it goes to Shaman with 100. With 100 well, there's, so. there's Keldeo after that, but aside from... Aside oh, okay. from that, I, I kind of agree in the sense that you, especially when there's only eight mons, you want at least three mons, I'd say, over base 100. Just sort of to deal with a lot of the teams, especially because uh, a lot of them are very, very offensive. The faster your team is, the easier it is to deal with them. And Weavile and Keldeo don't really hit a lot of the speed tiers they need. But I, ca I can see where you're coming from on that. Yeah. You want to take uh, pick number 15? Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> so, pick number 15 is Chime from, uh, yeah, Chime. So, starting with the offense of this team, it's amazingly, amazingly scary. <laughs> he has Kieran Black and also has a Z-Mon that can threaten everything out. It's so, it's so amazing in this 8-Mon draft because there are not many counters to an 8-Mon draft, yeah. I think. So, I think a lot of people have trouble dealing with this. Uh, also, with the other offenses like Excadrill, um, now this guy does have yeah. Dante. <laughs> and uh, Buzzwall and also Mega Pidgeot. Um, yeah, it was a great South Rocking in yep. the Go. Only his uh, hazard removal kind of is lacking, yeah. I think. Uh, his defense in Rodan Wash in Cresselia, I think, is a great pivot to uh, Rodan Wash. So he has also kind of. Okay, he has decent speed tiers with Pidgeot and Nihiligo. 
So I think it's a really balanced team. So yeah. Yeah, I I agree with pretty much everything you had to say there. Um, my biggest issue with it is that his speed outside of Nihilago is reliant on Pidgeot, which being that it's Mega it can't run Scarf. So a faster Mon on an opposing side that is Scarf can pose quite a threat to him. But again, for the most part, he has the Cresselia, which on a more offensive team is a very, very good uh, sort of wall just to absorb things that his offense can't deal with. And I think, as you said, uh, Kieran Black, most of the Dragon types in this 8 draft format are very scary. And out of all the Dragon types, I do think Kieran Black is the scariest. And slap a Z move onto that is just absolutely terrifying. So I wouldn't be surprised if he just destroys teams with that one mon alone. But he did. Yeah, another thing uh, about his speed, he has if X could draw Rotom Wash and the Heligo being great scarfers as well. I, I, yeah, but so. the scarfers that he does have options for don't hit very high speed tiers uh, outside of the Heligo. Uh, I would have liked to have seen maybe an an option for a sand setter with Excadrill on this team because he needs that little bit more speed but he can use a you know self setter Excadrill if he needs it and you never know what somebody can pull out especially with Kieran Black it's not a bad monster scarf either yeah all right something yeah okay. uh, again the, these teams for the most part the ones that are, are above 16 are all good drafts it's just certain ones we value more over others and uh, to continue on with that trend in 14th we have Fitz which uh, is one of the only true bulky teams I think in the Sinnoh conference most of them are very heavily offensively reliant whereas this one has just great defensive cores with uh, good hazard removing and setting options it's just a more passive team that's you know, still has a few offensive options with Landris T and uh, Mega Alakazam. Uh, as you said while we were discussing this before, uh, there's a bit too much uh, reliance on Lando T and Alakazam because the rest are relatively passive. Um, but uh, outside of that, you know what? If you're going for a more defensive option, this is the kind of team you want to pick up. And I'm always down for a bit of a, a bit of a bulky fest, so that's why he ends up here for me. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say. He's got Vault Turn. Yeah, I mean, this is just, this is just stall. <laughs> <laughs> this Excel's defense yeah. is just stall. Uh, well, the really good thing about this team is his Firewater Grass Core yeah. is really solid with Sweet Kunamukas and Autumn Heat. Then he has his Cleric and Aromatis. So, and then his offense in Lando and Alexam. And Steel Ace kind of, well, behind yeah, all those monsters. Sort of but... Yeah, I think, yeah, the only thing he's missing, obviously, is speed, but that's normal and it's tall, so... Yeah, I, I think uh, with Suicune and Mandibuzz, I believe, get both get access to Tailwind. Yeah. I know Suicune does, I'm not too sure yeah. about Mandibuzz. Uh, but, you know, he's got speed setting options, I think he just needs a bit, you know, just needs that extra little bit of speed. I don't know if... I th does Aromatis get Jake Room? Uh, yes, it does. Yeah, so he also has access to a Trick Room team with his slow mount. So. Trick Room, uh, Sheer Force, Steel it's coming at you. <laughs> yeah, why not? Yeah, that. I think that's all we have to say about Fitz, really. Just a bulky, bulky team. Yeah, yeah pretty great. So, the next one. Omega Jolteon and Oh <laughs> My. <laughs> that's one way to put it. These threats are so scary. It's Amazing. Victini, Mega Diancy, Hydreigon, Kartana, Keldeo, Thorn Eye, Needle Queen, and then as Sticky Web, Golfantula. This is hyper offense yep, at its best. Pretty much. Uh, you have the, uh, the, stick, the Sticky Web, Golfantula. Then you have the going through everything Victini. <laughs> um, yeah, you, ha you have the uh, ability to scarf with Hydreigon, Kartana. Even Victini as well, Keldeo. His speed tiers are fairly yeah. great, and especially with with the sticky webs, there isn't much is going to outspeed this. 
The only thing he's kind of lacking is his defense, obviously, but that's not not weird in the hyper offense. I think he might have a problem with certain um, teams, like stall teams. Yeah. So yeah, do you want to add something? To that? I, I again, I agree with exactly what you said. If you want a, a hyper offense team, this does exactly that. It's it's got the webs option and then just a whole lot of power. Um, as you said, it, my my biggest gripe with a lot of hyper offense or very offensive teams is that if they don't get if they get a matchup that isn't favorable, it's very very hard to beat unless you're really creative, which I do think Omega Jolt is. Uh, but we can't factor battlers in to these rankings. Unfortunately, it's just solely based on draft. Uh, and my m one of my gripes with it is that he doesn't have real uh, hazard removal options, despite the fact that yeah, he has Kartana, which can defog, but you don't really want to. Uh, but with a Victini, a Tornadus, and I guess a Galvantula, hazard removal is quite important. But outside of that, really scary team. I don't ever want to face that or try and build for that that's just terrifying <laughs> and uh, moving from one scary offensive team to another scary offensive team we have uh, none other than, than Johnny Ricepool uh, somebody who I actually know and uh, have faced in the past and boy oh boy is this team also very scary um, just the pairing alone of Mega Gardevoir and Landris T is absolutely disgusting uh, Mega Gardevoir, of course, struggles with Steel types uh, that either have a way to avoid Focus Blast or have can run a Resist Berry, and then Landorus T just smacks them anyway. Uh, and then to add on to that, he's got a Latias, Terrakion, Greninja, Cobalion, Roserade in the back. So uh, it's very similar to the previous team in the sense that they've got a whole lot of offense and a lot of pressure to gain from it, uh, except for they don't have the webs option and have a more defensive mod in Slowbro. I guess in that regard, it's a bit more similar to Chime, but uh, yeah, once again, very offensive, as a lot of the teams in this conference are. He has a lot of options, and I wouldn't be surprised if he just runs train through a few teams when he faces them. Yeah, he also has the, the Z-Mon Lando, which can scare out a lot of, lot yeah. of things. He has a really versatile team, he can go a lot of ways with Kabadion and Teraki on a lot of else. He can build a lot of different teams. And also he has the Toxic Spike yeah. for Roserade. So that's another thing I don't, I don't think many people have. So, yeah. It's very great. I've faced uh, Zed Lando T in the past and it's not something I like facing. Uh, if none of you know me or have seen anything that I've done, I got 5-0 uh, swept by a Zed Lando T. So, uh, <laughs> I've, I've had a bit of PTSD from just looking at the draft. So. Uh, I think it's about time we moved on. Um, who have we got up next? Sorry for a <laughs> Uh So the next one on this list is Lady Emma Sky and Setup is a bitch. <laughs> that... uh, Zygarde 50%, uh, Thunder T, uh, Mega Heracross. They can set up on your face and just win on their yeah, own. Pretty much. <laughs> they also have the Scallopede and you said something about being 5 0 sub, yeah. right? Oh, here's the Scala <laughs> tutorial. Um, River, if you're watching this video, I still hate your Scala Beat. Thank you very much. <laughs> he got, or she got, I, I really don't know, uh, the Gotha Tell in round 7. And for you guys who don't know, Shadow Tide is not banned. So that's going to be a lot, a lot of pain for the one facing this Gotha Tell. Uh, the disadvantage to this team, I think there's going to be a lot of pressure on Skarmory yeah. and Melodic. Because those are the only two who can really tank a hit. Because the other ones are really frill. Well, except Heracross can tank a hit on the defensive side, but that's it. And then I don't really get the Torkoal, but maybe there's maybe there's something to that. So yeah, that was basically it. For uh, me. Yeah, I again covered it pretty well. Uh, a lot of setup, a lot of options. A few gripes that I have, as you said, there's a lot of emphasis on Skarmory and Milotic, which are both weak to Electric, which is never good. Uh, Bolt Beam is quite an issue for this team, being that his only Electric resists are either not very bulky and will die to the Ice type, or a quad weak, which is never never a good thing. Uh, aside from that, again, Torkoal, kind of a throwaway pick for me. Uh, I like Torkoal when you've got some options, or if it's uh, a point-based draft, but in a free draft, 
with eight picks, it's kind of a throwaway. Um, aside from that, well, with your electric weakness, though, you have to the team. Yeah, yeah. Well, that puts a lot of pressure on your if you want to press an electric type because yeah, you don't really want any T to get free no. health back. Uh, but if if that electric type has access to either ice beam or HP ice, it can become an issue. Let's just say uh, Rotom Frost is OP. Uh, <laughs> everybody should pick yeah. it. Uh, but yeah, uh, outside of Scolipede, he, she, he, I, I'm not too sure myself. Uh, uh, doesn't really have much outright speed, which can become an issue, but I do like the option of speed passing to Heracross, as I think uh, it was Joe in GBA Season 2 or 3 showed us. That is a very scary thing. Um, and I think, you know what, it's very similar to the other offensive teams. If you have the right matchup, it's just going to destroy someone. Yeah. Uh, sure. In number 10, again, more offense. Uh, it's Jose uh, with, I'm not sure what his team name is in this. I was going to just say the team name, but I can't remember. Uh, <laughs> uh, his his team, again, very similar to all the others, mainly offensive with a few defensive options, mainly in uh, Mega Scizor and Tyranitar. I guess he's got Sylveon as well. Um, uh, he's not really got great defense cores, but his offense cores are, are just beautiful. Um, he's got hazard options galore, he's got momentum gainers in Thunder Asai, Mega Scizor, Sylveon with the Baton Pass. Uh, just a lot of options for him to keep the pressure on his opponent, and I think that's the real strength of this team. Is that even if you've got a good defense cost to deal with it, he can just switch switch out with one of his offensive gaining moves and just pressure you even more with a different mon. It's a bit it's a relentless offensive team, and I think that's why we have him a bit higher than some of the other hyper offensive teams. Why don't you uh, just give your thoughts on it? Yeah, I actually had this team on number one <laughs> <laughs> uh, because I actually fell in love with this team. It's uh, I really like bulk with offense. And like Tarantar, Garchomp, Scizor, uh, Buzzball, all are really bulky mounts. And it can also be really hard. Then you have the Sylveon with kind of Wish Pass and whatever. Then the Tundi uh, having both um, the physical and special side. And also the Z Move user. So I think this mount, uh, this mount, this guy could really go either way with all his mounts. Yeah. Really versatile. And also, almost everything is OU. I don't, I don't know how he got that. <laughs> Yeah, great team. Yeah. Uh, do you want to take us over to uh, number nine? Yeah. Number nine is our buddy Jake. I think it's the Virginia Tech Frokies in this league. Uh, he has a great team with uh, offensive ch um, threats like Latios, Infernape, uh, Crocodile. Uh, maybe he expects he will risk as well. Uh, and he also has a fairly good uh, defense in Venusaur, Sylveon, uh, Empoleon, Suicune. I don't really get the Empoleon, Suicune um, team, because I don't really know what that, sh what that should cover. But he could go a lot of ways. He can go Spec Sylveon, even he can go Source Dance, Mega Venusaur if he <laughs> wants to. Uh, yeah, I only think he misses speed, so I think his Crocodile will be forced to go Scarf a lot of yeah. times, or Infernape. As well, so that's basically it. Yeah, my I, for me, Jake has the epitome of a classic Rykwin team, where he's got a very, very balanced base team. You can tell the way that he drafted it. He wanted physical attacker, uh, special attacker, physical attacker, uh, defensive wall, special defensive wall, physical attacker, special attacker, oh, yeah. and the way that he's sort of built it is he knew what he wanted from each mon. But as a whole, it doesn't really fit great. Outside of maybe Sylveon, he doesn't have a true wall breaker. I guess Latios with a Z Crystal can do that to an extent. But he's heavily reliant on Infernape, whether it be Scarfa, Banded, or even as a support mon. It's one of those mods that he has to bring week in, week out. And with Infernape, you know what? It's not too bad. But I'd rather have other options to deal with, which is why. He falls a little bit lower than a few of the other people, at least in my opinion. Yeah, and he also, and he also misses some pure power. Yeah. yeah, of course he has Infernape with being power, but then then 
outside of Latios doing damage, there isn't really scary things on the Steam. Yeah. No real wall breaker, you just not have an Entei or an Embo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so speaking of teams with wall breakers, we're now moving on to Damon. Again, one of the, mo the teams that I believe you had relatively high, that I had slightly lower, but... Uh, that's why having two people doing a power rankings is interesting, is that we have differing opinions and we can discuss why we have differing opinions. Uh, this one, in particular, I like most of the things about it, outside of his speed reliance, is heavily dependent on Dugtrio and Infernape. Infernape, of course, you don't always want to run speedy, and Dugtrio is just the frailest thing you will ever see. Uh, but outside of that, you know, he's got a very good uh, Firewater Grass Core, especially with the Z-Rain into Ferrothorn option that you mentioned before. Uh, hazard options are relatively reliable, except for he doesn't have any uh, removal, which isn't great when you have a Dragonite wanting to preserve the multi-scale, of course. Uh, but outside of that, you know what? Uh, deals pretty well with a lot of offense, with the way that his team is set up, and with the way that a lot of these drafts are set up, he can have very good matchups against a lot of these teams, and I think that he is definitely a person who can threaten to make it through to the next round. Do you want to take over from uh, your views on Jose? I've no, not Jose. Sorry, uh, who are we on now? Damon. Sorry, Damon. My bad. Yeah. So him having two Silgro users is already scaring <laughs> me. And then he has set up with Dragonite as well, so that's pretty scary. Yep. Um, as you said, his speed isn't really that great, but he can also run uh, Z Rain Dance Manaphy. Mm -hmm. And then that also helps his Ferrothorn, because his, the fire weakness is almost gone. And then you have the, the Ferrothorn, the Floor Disc, and Sableye can really tank the hits for his um, strength. So. I really like the balance because it, it's half stall, half yeah. power. So I think it's, it's pretty good. Yeah, I just think it's a team that uh, doesn't necessarily need a matchup, more so than <coughs> it just is re very reliable. Every mod on there you will see on drafts basically everywhere. When you look at every one of these mods, it's a draft, it's a mod that you think, yeah, I'll pick this up in a draft sometime. And I guess that's kind of what he was going for. Yeah. So do you want to go over Mentz? Again, another draft that you were quite a fan of. So now we got... Yo, what is up, guys? More Mentz here. <laughs> and today, we're going to talk about his team. That was good. Um, yeah. I rated this team pretty high because uh, I really like Hyper Offense. Although I certainly don't bring it. <laughs> uh, he has Victini, Top Coco, Hydrago, Mamoswine. And those four, I think, break down the entire game. <laughs> and then you have the, the superior as well, that can really da have damage and, and, and everything. But then his Blastoise and Klefki are, are, I think, the only things that can really tank a hit. Yeah. So, besides him having not defense, he has great speed tiers, he has great offense, he has great everything, to be honest. So, except besides of having only offense, his team is great. Yeah, uh, he's got a very similar setup to people like Chime or even Johnny, I believe, was another one that we went over where they've got a lot of hyper offense and then a few defensive mods. My biggest issue with his team, even though things like his offense and his speed tiers are a lot better than some of the others, his defense has no recovery options at all. When you look at Mega Blastoise and Klefki, you want at least some kind of either wish pass or. I guess Superior can offer the Leech Seed option, but let's be honest, you're not going to run Leech Seed Superior every week. Uh, he is kind of caught in between two ways of thinking, where if he's going to bring Hyper Offense, he can stack all his offensive mons, but if he wants to bring more balance uh, with a, a few more defensive mons in Clefki and Blastoise, he's going to have a bit more trouble because of the lack of recovery. Uh, yeah, exactly. But again, his first four picks can break any, any wall core, so... Uh, if he gets the momentum in a game, it's just pretty much over. Exactly. Alright, so next up we have Max Mas Master 264 uh, Quite the obnoxious name to say, but you know what, I'll forgive him. Uh, 
his his team is uh, it's just you know what that's a draft that's all that, it's sort of a nice vanilla basic draft it's got everything you want in it it's got the basics of a good draft it's got hazard setters hazard removers it's got bulk he's got speed he's got offense he's got defense it just doesn't have anything particularly special it doesn't have a particular wall breaker outside of mama swine and even then Mamo is very dependent on matchup but I would like to have seen something to pair up with Mama Swine better than Heatran. Uh, I don't know, maybe something yeah. that's a bit more offensively reliant. But aside from that, again, just very nice balance. Uh, one of the biggest issues I have with this team, though, is a lot of his mons are one-dimensional. Outside of Celebi, I guess, and Megalatios. Because you know that Tyranitar is going to be a physically offensive bulky mon. Heatran's going to be special with a bit of either bulk or a rocking option. Glyscore is just as one-dimensional as it gets. Mama Swine physically offensive. Crowbat a fast pivot. Aromatis wish passer. It's very predictable, and that's my biggest gripe with this team. If he had a bit more um, versatility on there, it would have been one of the top drafts in my opinion. But it's just lacking a bit. Yeah, so it's only mom dimensional picks, so like Gladiolus and Celebi, and I thought, okay, let's make Celebi my Z move. <laughs> I didn't really get the Zemo view for Celebi, but maybe that's just me. I'm not a fan either. Uh, but his Gliscor heat trend cover each other perfectly. Yep. So that's really a thing he he um, he did well. Well, as Mama Swine being great wall breaker, I mean, his Crobat and Latios are the only thing that have speed, but I think it's enough in his team because uh, his bulk um, makeup makes up for that. Yeah. It's a really well rounded team in, in general, so. I think he built a really, really great team. He should be really proud of his team. Yeah. Okay, so moving on to number five, I think. Yep. Yeah. yeah, coming up to the top five. We have Kiho. I think it's yep. Kiho. So this team might be a surprise that we put it this high because it has a, uh, some really unrated mounts. But the combination of Tapu Bulu and Heatran is godlike. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he has great speed tiers, he, he has enough hazard removal. What he kind of misses is like really scary power. But okay, Tapu Bulu is strong, Raikou and Septile can be scary. But um, yeah, he misses kind of power, he misses kind of pure power. And then um, I'm, I'm kind of secretly rooting for this guy because he has a great team. Uh, although he has things like Honshkro and Hariyama and Tentacruel that you won't see that much in an 8-month eight mo eight month draft. So I kind of respect his choices, and he covered his weaknesses really good, so I think he really deserves this spot. Yeah, you you put the pairing of Tapu Gulu and Heatran as godlike, I put it as spicy, and uh, his other picks in Honchko, Mega Sceptile, and things like that, which aren't super conventional, are also very spicy. And if you know me, you know that spice is the way to go. If you can do something unconventional and get success out of it, I will love you forever. And I think this is one of those teams that breaks the mold in the sense that it's not a normal draft, but it can st it still has the tools and the options to do a very good job and get some decent wins out of it. So, as you said, I'm kind of secretly rooting for Kiho at this point. Exactly. And uh, moving on to our number four pick, getting towards the top end now of the rankings, uh, we have Rob Jr. Uh, again, a player who I believe was in last GOT? If I remember right, yeah, yeah he, I think he's really uh, <laughs> Again, I'm. This is my first uh, season here in the GOT, so I'm not super familiar with most of the people here. But this team, for sure, is a very well-rounded team. Uh, he's got decent offense cores. You know, he's got the uh, Dragon Fairy Steel. I think no, just very, just Fairy Dragon. Uh, Steel Dragon. Sorry, I'm all over the place. Uh, <laughs> uh, I just really like his sort of balance of supportive and setup power in the sense that he's got his Jirachi, his Rotom Wash, uh, even his Apout on Numbreon, which are all more supportive oriented mons, <coughs> which can then allow him to bring in a Mega Pinsir and just click Source Dance and destroy a team. Uh, I very, the thing I love about this team particularly is the Z Crystal on Gengar. I think if he didn't have that, he might fall short on the special side. But with that option there, it allows him to have that extra wall breaking option, which is just fantastic. 
My biggest issue with this team is that it's very, very weak to the likes of knockoff and or ghost types outside of Umbreon, uh, which can make it susceptible to, for example, another Gengar or something like that. But I just, I, th I think it's one of those teams that it covers all bases pretty decently. And again, it's a, it's a balanced team with decent offense, so you can't go wrong. Yeah, the thing I've written down here is that he might have a bit of a dark type issue later on. <laughs> but um, I think this team is the most uh, well-rounded draft um, of the, the the Sentinel Conference. I could agree with that. <laughs> yeah, I like his team a lot because um, he has it, he has everything covered. Um, he might not have a team full of offensive threats, but he certainly has a few scary ones like Drachin, Gengar, and even Komo can do some work. And obviously, Mega Pinsir can stick so you if you don't watch out. So yeah, he had a really, really good team. Do you want to uh, cover our number three? Yeah. So number three is uh, someone I also know, and that's Michael. Um, well, the first thing I noticed is that he has round three Snorlax, <laughs> <laughs> and well, I should respect him for that because. I might have seen some teams with better chemistry here, uh, but he, it's a scary team and it's also really well-rounded again. He has a, a great um, defense and offense. Um, he really evened that out because he has the two-blade Hariyama, um, Snorlax and Togekiss as being defensive and then Garchomp, Alexam, Jolteon, Staraptor as being offensive. So he really rounded, rounded that well. He has his rocker and the Garchomp, uh, and he has his removal, and I think Togekiss, of course. Well, his speed is good enough. Uh, the only thing I find weird is that a Z move user is Hariyama, but he's kind of known. He's kind of known as a memer, so I think that's pretty much the meme in this whole draft. <laughs> yeah. I anything? What were you gonna say? Sorry. No, I said anything you want to yeah. add. Uh I agree with you in the sense that Hariyama is a weird Zemon. I'd have liked to have seen maybe Staraptor or something like that holding it instead. But one thing I Garchomp. yeah Garchomp as well. One thing I like about it is one of the staples of a draft is a bulky water type to deal with ice and fire. But who needs a bulky water type when you have two thick fat uses in Snorlax and Hariyama? I just think that's exactly. that's the the best way to patch up that. Just just draft just draft thick mons. I think it's quite a funny yeah. way to, to approach a draft, and I think, kind of similar to Kiho, he's bringing some spice, so I'd like to see him find at least some success with it. Uh, I'm not too sure how well the blade fits on this team, but outside of that, again, well balanced, got some options there, solid draft. Yeah. And uh, moving further on into our top three, and at the number two spot, we have none other than Matty Brolic. I would flex, but I don't have a... Uh, a, uh, a face come on right now um, again this is one of those teams that's more centered on offense but still has defensive options very similar to a few others that we've gone over I'd, the thing I particularly like about this team is the speed tiers he hits it's got Megalop, Latios, Greninja uh, even Comfey and, and Celebi all are 100 or over that's 5 out of 8 are 100 or over which is insane and his defensive options being Celesteela, Nidoqueen and Marowak as a core are just fantastic. One of the few mons that can break Celesteela reliably is a load of Marowak and he's picked it up. So the way that he has drafted around Celesteela as defense is just great, I really like it. Uh, he's got hazard setting options with Nidoqueen and Marowak which also allows him to get toxic spikes if he feels like it and Greninja with spikes if he feels inclined to do so. Uh, his hazard removal is heavily reliant on Latios, but similarly to a lot of the other hyper offense drafts we've gone over, you don't always need hazard removal. Uh, I just really like the way that he's set a team around Megalopoly and Celesteela, which I think is what he was going for with them being his first two picks. Uh, but yeah, all around solid draft, and I wouldn't be surprised if he got far with it. No, obviously he's such a good player, so I'm not. I'm not. Um afraid of saying that he, he can win yeah. it all, uh, especially with his team that's really good. The only thing I find maybe a bit weird is Comfy, because I don't think Comfy is drafted in all the eight, eight drafts. No, I don't think so either. So, 
I'm really looking forward to what you have planned with the Comfy. So, uh, his, his, it fits his Dragon Fairy Steel Core. Oh, it doesn't have one, never mind. Uh, oh, he does, he does. With Ladio, Set of Steel yeah. and Comfy. Okay. So, maybe he needed a Fairy type and then said, hey, Comfy, that's good. But, yeah, I think uh, this is a really good draft. So now on to the number one, and I think this was, this was pretty unanimous because we both had it pretty high. I think you had yeah, it on one. Yeah, he was my first pick. I had it, I think at like six or seven. So that was pretty, still pretty high. Uh, is ja, j, oh my, Jvao 3M? <laughs> I can't pronounce his <laughs> name. Oh my. Uh, yeah, we we picked this to be the best uh, draft in the Sino conference. I really like his balance between bulk and offense, um, with like his offense being Mew, Zygarde, Thundee, and then the Scalopede, and then his defense in Mega Blast always Florgius, Ferrothorn, and also a lot of Marowak if he wants to run that defensively with whatever. Yeah, Scalopede, so my nightmares are uh, <laughs> are starting over again. The river, I still hate it. <laughs> and, uh, well, he has Mew, and I think this is, that's the most a versatile thing in draft league format so he could go anyway with almost all of these mounts so i think that's also why he it's the best draft um we rated it yeah and he's got i think the thing that i really like about this team is that he's got a lot of options for most of his mons uh while he does lack in speed outside of his scholopied he does have the option once again to speed pass which is uh similar to i forget who it was the daemon i believe uh, who's got a very similar setup in Scolipede with slower mons. I think so. Um, sorry to uh, trigger your PTSD again with Scolipede, but uh, two Scolipede <laughs> teams making the top eight is quite impressive. Uh, he's got basically everything you want in the draft, and with great setup options, great, you know, great wall breaking options, he's got basically everything you want. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I do think Munium Z is allowed, is it? No, it's, it's not allowed, actually. sorry. That's just me being dumb, I guess. Uh, nah. <laughs> but regardless, Mew is extremely versatile with a Z-Crystal anyway, with access to coverage of basically every type. And so if you need <laughs> exactly. if you need to break something, slap a Z-Crystal on it. So I, I really like the way that he set up this team. Once again, this was my number one, and just because of the way that we averaged it out, it ended up being number one overall. It's It's just a solid draft, and I really like it. Yes, that was it. Uh, I hope you liked this video. Um, we'll leave some links down in the description below if you want to check some people out. And uh, well, well, we'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.